of the house, uh, the news of the markets. They know what's going on. As soon as that word spread, uh, they started huddling in groups, trying to twist arms, change votes. I think the last I checked, only one vote had changed. Uh, and right now, what we're getting is a lot of blame. People on the Republican side blaming a hyperpartisan speech, what they're calling a hyperpartisan speech by Nancy Pelosi for turning off their members who were going to vote for it. On the other side, Democrats saying that's absolutely ludicrous, as if members were about to vote and then a speech would change their mind. What they're doing right now is trying their best to try to find a way to rescue this uh, with that same language we've heard all along, that we cannot afford a crisis and people have to step up. But I tell you, Kira, people are desperately afraid of not just losing their seats, but doing something wrong for the American people. Because despite what we're hearing from our analysts from Wall Street, they're hearing from their constituents that this is not what they want. And Americans are really concerned about this bill. Uh, members are really caught in a box right now. And uh, just as the members on the floor are twisting arms, their staffers are already getting out the talking yeah, how do points. They, how do they, Jessica, how do you get someone to switch their vote? Are they, are they all down there talking to each other and they know who voted yay, who voted nay? Yep. And they, they come together and they go, okay, let's go tackle so-and-so and, -so and get them to change their vote. I mean, is it sort of like Wall Street where they're just kind of going at each other? Well, there are designated members who are experts at this, like Clyburn on the Democratic side is what you call the whip is the person who counts the votes and goes around. And these are the people who are best at persuasion. And what they'll do is they'll find somebody who's voted no and they'll say, let me remind you of the consequences of this. Let me remind you of what we did for you. Let me remind you of how much money we raised for you. Let me remind you of how important this is to America. Do you want this on your shoulders? I mean, persuasion by any means they have. Uh, they're working them into person by person. And it's what's happening right now until they unfreeze this vote. They're just going to hold it closed until they can get enough yay votes. Wow. Okay, Jessica, continue to monitor that for us. Meanwhile, I want to bring in Kathleen Koch. She's at the White House. While this is going on, uh, Kathleen, apparently the White House is working on another plan right now. No, Kira, the White House actually wouldn't go to, to where we were trying to get them to go today. You know, what's next? What if, if this doesn't succeed? But what was very interesting, something a lot of lawmakers have been expressing concern about was, so is this the end of it? If we commit 700 billion taxpayer dollars to this, is that going to be it? Then are we done? And it, we brought that up to Tony Fratto in the briefing today, and he said, you know, it does no good to speculate where this goes next. Very, very unsettling comment. Uh, he went on to say, well, this will prevent a great deal of instability, a great deal of uncertainty. He said there will still be financial institutions that will continue to be under stress. So right there uh, in the briefing, the implication that even if this did pass, that this wouldn't be the end of it, that other firms might be coming back to the federal trough for more bailouts. So again, the kind of talk that a lot of lawmakers have been worried about and the White House not re yet reacting. Obviously, there are these continuing efforts to potentially try to change these votes. The White House have been confident. It's very interesting. That was the word that I heard this morning and I heard last night from senior administration officials. Confident. They thought they were in good shape. They thought they had the votes. But uh, clearly, they were wrong. All right. Jessica Yellen, are you still with us? No, okay, all right. We, we, if you're just, uh, first of all, we want to welcome our, our international vo uh, viewers right now. Uh, what you are watching uh, live here, uh, the counting or the debate has ended, uh, the voting has ended, and what's happening now is a negotiation process uh, between Democrats and Republicans uh, trying to pass the $700 billion bailout plan to try and resuscitate uh, the U.S. Uh, financial systems uh, here in the United States. Uh, as you know, around the world. Uh, everyone has been talking about what's been happening uh, to the U.S. economically uh, with regard to uh, banks, financial institutions uh, crashing. You can see uh, the Dow Industrials down 453 points right now as all eyes from Wall Street to the White House are watching what is happening right here uh, on the House floor with regard to that $700 billion bailout plan to try and rescue the U.S. on so many different levels uh, on the financial spectrum. Kate Baldwin is on Capitol Hill. Kathleen uh, Koch is at the White House. Ed Henry is in our D.C. Bureau. Jessica Yellen was there on the floor. We're covering all the angles. Kate, let's get back to you. Uh, as Jessica was saying, I mean, this is a tough sell right now, tough negotiations, as, uh, you know, the win would be 218. It's now 207 to 226. 
uh, votes are in mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of a lot of persuading to, to, to switch people over uh, to, yeah. to vote this through the House to get to the Senate on Wednesday or Thursday. Exactly. And, you know, we've talked about the fifth. This was the normal time for this vote is 15 minutes. It's clearly gone far past that. And since then, the vote, if we've been watching very closely, it had been frozen for a little bit. We see that there's still one member that has not voted, and it was frozen for a little while, but just a little while ago, we did see that you saw one Democratic vote and one Republican vote move from the nay into the yay category. So you can see that there is a lot going on off camera on that floor as they're trying to twist arms and convince people to not only change their vote for some members, but to also hold their vote. And we've talked about how this debate the debate period and this voting scheduled voting period has ended, but this doesn't mean in any way, shape, or form that they're going to be the gavel's going to come down anytime soon. In 2003, when the Republicans were in the majority, another controversial bill that had to do with making adding prescription medication to Medicare, this brought about a similar situation in, in the effect that the Republican majority held the vote open for three hours. Not saying that would happen here, but this is a similar situation where if the, if the people in the majority, and here we're talking about leaders on both parties in support of this bill, they can hold this vote open indefinitely as long as they can in order to try to twist those arms and get as many people that are on the fence and that they can persuade to get them over into the into the supporting column. So we're definitely watching for that right now. And as we can see, the numbers are holding, but you know that they are running around on that floor trying to convince people why they need to change their vote and hold their vote. All right, Kate, let us know as soon as you get something new. Ed Henry, let's go back to you there in the D.C. Bureau. I mean, a lot at stake here for President Bush. Uh, this is, you know, he's, he's the, the main guy here that wants this signed off on both by uh, Congress and the Senate. So let me ask you, is it possible, first of all, can you have cell phones down there on the floor? Is it possible that those within the White House are calling their counterparts there saying, It is okay, possible. Let okay. me tell you, that Medicare vote uh, that uh, Kate is rightly pointing out, I remember that one well, and I was covering the Hill at the time, and basically this was happening in the middle of the night, and the president was still calling members of Congress, but they were doing it in the cloakroom because technically you're not supposed to have cell phones on the floor. You see members all the time take one out. They're told to, to go into a lobby, but the president of the United States in that case was still calling calling members in the cloakroom of the House, just off the floor, sort of a private area for members of Congress. That was very dramatic. Uh, and I can tell you as well, there were cabinet secretaries for that Medicare vote. And we can't see here how many people are off camera in other uh, nooks and crannies on the House floor. But there were cabinet secretaries from the Bush cabinet for that Medicare vote years ago, twisting arms on the floor trying to change it. So far, we've only seen, uh, essentially, from when I last spoke to you, one Republican switch their vote. When last we spoke, there were 133 nays in the Republican column which is significant. That shows you where the majority of the no votes are coming. They're coming from House Republicans. We've known all along they were skeptical. Now it's down to 132. So only one Republican member, we don't have the name yet, has switched uh, to the yay side. Uh, and so I think the, the stakes for the president point, are huge. What, what do you think the sticking point is? Why do you think this wasn't, um, well, nothing was going to be easy in this process, but why has why it reached this point and why is there a lot of negotiation going on and why has only one person changed their mind? What do you think the sticking point is or do we know yet? Number of things. I mean, as Jessica Yellen was pointing out before, uh, there are some of the House Republicans saying, look, we've heard from the White House before that the sky is going to fall. We heard about WMD. That didn't turn out right uh, with Iraq. We've heard all kinds of warnings, uh, and, and they didn't pan out. And so while they see that the markets are going through a lot of strain, uh, they're not sure that it's maybe going to be quite as bad a scenario as the administration is laying out, so they're skeptical. Number two, uh, Republicans by nature are in favor of free markets. They don't. They're very suspicious of the fact that the government is taking such a large role, uh, not just with this bailout, but the previous bailouts. We have to remember and put this in context, there's been a series of government uh, interventions that have really alarmed a lot of conservatives, not just on Capitol Hill, but around the country. Third, you have to point to the fact that every single member of the House, all four, 435, are up for re-election every two years. While the Senate, only one-third of them are up, every single House member is up in November. Democrat, Republican, Independent, you're up for re-election. And their constituents, many of them, are calling and saying, why is Wall Street bail being bailed out while people on Main Street are not being helped? That's their view. They may be wrong. Maybe this plan 
could help people on Main Street, but the view right now is very much against this on Main Street. Susan Lasovich was pointing that out. The way this was sold to the American people, it was not done very well in terms of getting it away from a focus on a bailout of Wall Street, focusing it instead on helping people on Main Street. And you have to look at the stakes for President Bush. This will be a devastating loss for this president if, in fact, the votes do not change. Look at what he did in the last week. I mean, he used all of the of the bully pulpit that he could, including a primetime address to the nation uh, just on Wednesday night, and it 